when I read that article, it really hit home. It made such an impression on me that I immediately emailed Reverend Julia and said, I'd really like to give a sermon on the topic of time and daily schedules because that's our life, right? We live life one day at a time. So I'm calling this sermon Sacred Time. I want to be clear that in typical UU fashion, I'm not thinking about sacred time as something apart or separate from our everyday lives. Instead, I want us to focus. I want us to face head on the unhealthy ways that we're often pushed to spend our days in our modern society. And I want us to work together to start to figure out how we can reclaim a healthy and a sacred sense of time, even as part of our busy everyday lives. There will be a little time for you all to work on your own and share later. I won't be doing this all alone because our days all look different. My sacred day might look different from your sacred day. A sacred day of someone in their 20s is going to look different from a day of someone in their 50s or 60s. Um, so we all have wisdom to bring to bear on this problem that's facing us. Jackson Rayner said, running from place to place has become existential reassurance for meaning and a hedge against emptiness. Perhaps it's time to reconsider this. This topic has been percolating in the back of my mind for many years. I remember when I came to graduate school to pursue a PhD in English at the University of Wisconsin in 2003. I had spent two years working in an office before coming to graduate school. So I came into the program with the radical idea that a person should maybe work during work hours and rest or play during off work hours. I watched my fellow students work all weekend and stay up all night. I heard them say they didn't have time to exercise or go to church, play a sport, or join a choir. Many of them wore their exhaustion like a badge of honor. Now, I've pulled a few all-nighters in my time. I'm not going to lie about that. But for my daily schedule, way back then, I chose something different. I stopped working each night around dinner time. And then I went to play ultimate frisbee or work out at my favorite local gym or maybe attend a yoga class or a concert. I often wrote late on Friday evenings and early on Saturday mornings, but then I stopped at lunchtime on Saturday to attend a yoga class. I didn't miss it every week. And then I did the most radical thing of all. I didn't work. And I tried not to worry about work for the rest of the day Saturday. I had fun on Saturday night and I went to church on Sunday morning. I volunteered in the three-year-old's classroom and it was a hoot. I can tell you stories. Um, and then I had dinner with my dear friends, the Captivals, every Sunday evening. I didn't start working again till I got home Sunday night or occasionally, gas, not till Monday morning. That schedule helped me to be healthier and actually more productive than many of my fellow students. It helped me avoid burnout, and it helped me build relationships with family and friends during those years. I decided to live my life during graduate school. I didn't put life on hold until somehow I had worked hard enough to earn the chance to have those relationships or have some rest. Instead, I tried to weave my work into a daily schedule and a weekly schedule that was sustainable. My schedule now is very different. It looks pretty boring from the outside and I like it that way. I have two children, I have a job that's not quite full time, but about 75% and my life revolves around those things. And yet many of the principles that guided me then still guide me now. I wake up and go to sleep about the same time every day. I end almost every day by still reading to my children and tucking them in to bed at night. Obviously they can read now. One of them read a story to you, 
but that is our nightly ritual to transition from the busyness of the day into the quiet of sleep. And to me, it's sacred. So let me see. I need to flip this page over. <laughs> um, I have a daily practice of singing or piano playing that to me is a form of meditation. I'm sure you each have your own meditation. Maybe it's gardening or practicing Spanish grammar. <laughs> I was struck by something I remember Jenny Stamatakos, one of our church members, saying several years ago. It was so wise that I still think about it often. Jenny said, basically, it, it was at a time when there was lots of talk about self-care, like you should light candles and go on vacation or something. And Jenny said, this approach to self-care, that you need to go away on vacation to find it, is all wrong. She said, instead of trying to escape your life to find self-care, you should try to build a life for yourself that you don't need to escape from, a life that is healthy and fulfilling and sustaining for you each day. And I was texting with her earlier this week. She said, oh, yeah, I did say that. I still try to live my life that way. So we're about to come to the interactive lesson <laughs> um, of today's sermon. So I want you to start thinking about what is it that you value in your life? How could you shape your days in such a way that you nurture your soul instead of depleting it? So, Vanstrom, can we put up the first slide? As I was thinking about this topic, I realized we draw wisdom from many of the world's traditions. And there are few people in the world who have thought more deeply about how to organize their daily routines to support the sacred in life than the monks and nuns of different religious traditions. I started poking around on the internet and there are fabulous websites out there for all different monasteries and things. Don't worry, I'll read this to you, but this is just to give you an example. They all share their daily schedule. It's that important. So I'm going to kind of read this to you. I have three examples out of the many here. One is the Monastery of Christ in the Desert. It is a men's uh, a Catholic monastery. Then I have the Franciscan Sisters, which is a women's uh, uh, convent, Catholic. And then Shravasti Buddhist Abbey. So from a few different traditions. Um, and at as I read it, I'd love for you to think about what do you see that's in common or different among these schedules? What do you notice? So Monastery of Christ in the Desert, 4 a.m. vigils, 5.30 a.m. lauds. That's a type of prayer service, I believe. 8.45 a.m. terse, another type of prayer service. 9 to 12.40, work period. 1 p.m. sext, which is another prayer service, followed by the main meal. 2 p.m., none, another prayer service. 5.20 p.m., Eucharistic adoration. 5.50 p.m., Vespers. 6.20, light meal. 7.30, compline, followed by nightly silence. The Franciscan sisters start their day at 5.30 a.m. with the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in silence, followed by morning prayer at 6.30, Holy Mass at 7.15, 8 a.m., they have breakfast in silence with prayer. 9 to noon, they have a work period. At noon, prayer and worship. 12.45 p.m., lunch, followed by dishes. They really emphasize the dishes on their website. 1.30 to 5, work or ministry. 5 p.m., adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. 5.30, evening prayer. 6 p.m. dinner together, 7 p.m. dishes. I think they had an exclamation mark after dishes on their website. 7.15 p.m. recreation and study, 8.30 p.m. night and prayer, 9 p.m. grand silence. Isn't that a fabulous phrase, grand silence? Shavasti Buddhist Abbey, they similarly start their day pretty early, 5 a.m., wake up. 5.30 a.m. breakfast, or sorry, meditation. 
7.30 a.m. breakfast, 8.15 a.m. residence stand-up meeting, 8.30 to 12.30 offering service prayer, 12.30 p.m. lunch, 1.30 p.m. dishes and break, 2.30 p.m. offering service prayer, 4.30 study time, 6 p.m. medicine meal, 7 p.m. meditation or chanting, 8.15 study or personal time, 10 p.m. lights out. The Buddhists are the night owls of the group. Lights out is until 10 p.m. But I was curious if there was anything you noticed that you want to share. And I'm going to ask if it's long, come on up and share it here so the people online can hear. Um, and if it's short, I can repeat it. Anything that you notice? Yeah, Peter. Clearly, I was um, thinking about dessert at that time. It should be dinner. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Yes. Although I, you know, Christ can be in our desserts as well. Um, yes. Anything else that you notice? Uh, yes, Sumika. Yes, yeah, Sumika, for the people online, the work periods are not the main body of the day. Yeah, do you want to say more? Um, I mean, obviously, if you're a religious person, you know, that, that prayer or meditation is, is your main your main job, I guess. But we also have all these regular work things. I think it just shows a different kind of balance. Yeah, so Sumiko, for the folks online, was saying there's a different kind of balance where the prayer and meditation are kind of the bulk of, of the day or the most important parts that I guess kind of anchor the day instead of the work and the work is put in in addition to that yeah anyone else yeah I um okay Malin and Dan and if it's long feel free to come on up and share okay said, by Mark I had the same thing at the same time every day Mark put in bar and yeah, by having the same thing at the same time every day, you kind of mark where in the day you are as you go. Yeah, it's a very strict routine. Yeah, Dan? <laughs> you put angels on there. Presumably the work period, some of them pay bills as their work period. Um, some of them, I believe the Monastery of Christ in the Desert has a visitor center and a gift shop. And so they work there. There are various things. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ed. Yes. Mornings are very important. Those early mornings, those pre-dawn moments. I was thinking about that. I was thinking of those transition periods. When you transition from waking, from sleeping to waking, when you transition from praying to working, and then from working to eating and community time, like each of those transitions seems to be marked with prayer, with meditation, with some kind of ritual. Um, and then a nightly prayer or meditation before bed. Um, I was thinking my daily routine at home I have a morning routine to get me from bed to awake. And then our nightly routine of reading and tucking kids into bed, that that transition is an important time. Uh, yeah, Dave. Very structured to be there. Be an individual and your own It is. Dave says it's very structured. And that limits the time to be an individual and have your own thoughts. It's so true. Um, and that's kind of a good transition into the next part, which is obviously we're not monks and nuns, right? We don't have um, a community and a leadership enforcing this strict schedule for us. Um, we also have busy daily lives. We can't retreat from the wider world. Um, I'm in the chauffeur stage of parenting, so trust me, I know that. Um, but as you use, we're the ones who create our own structure for our days, right? We have that responsibility. 
um, for our own spiritual health and development. I think that it behooves us to pause and to think deliberately about how we spend our days. So this is a lesson for each of us um, because make no mistake, if we do not deliberately choose how to spend the precious days, hours, and minutes of our lives, other people will choose for us. The advertisers want our time and attention. The social media companies, the app developers, those little devices we carry in our hands and our pockets uh, steal our time and attention. They're designed to steal our time and attention away from us. So if we don't deliberately organize our time, then we merely react to this world that's around us, this technological world that isn't very healthy. So this is the time. Vanstrom, can we move to the next slide? I'm going to ask Susan some note cards and some pens. And I have a few questions I'd like you to think about. Chat with a neighbor, scribble a little bit on your own, whatever it takes. I would love for you to think about what do you most value in life? And how do you spend your life each day? Does your daily life advance the values you hold dear? So take a minute to kind of jot down, what are the values um, that you would most like to dedicate your life to? And jot down a few of the things that you do each day and think about, do they match up? Or are there some changes you might like to make? Some things you'd like to add or remove from how you spend your average day? If you are online, you can do this on your own, or you can chat with one another. Let's see, should we turn on one of the lights, do you think? I think that we don't need to be able to see any of my typos. Peter always catches the typos. While we're thinking about that, Vanstrom, can we move to the next slide as well? Because in case you needed another prompt to think about it, I put up a few other questions. So for you, at your the stage of life you're in now, what are the characteristics of a holy day? What would your sacred day look like? What are the daily chores you must do each day? What is a prayer, meditation, art, some kind of sacred practice? that you may do each day. What would a daily schedule look like to give you peace of mind, to anchor you in difficult times or be a tool of enlightenment in better times?
Oh, Vanstrom, can you go back one, please? Thank you. <laughs> I put a lot of questions. I know it's a very you, you thing to give you lots of questions. Whenever you're sort of done writing, look up at me so I can get an idea of. Okay. Is there anyone who would like to come up and share something you've thought about? Maybe a sacred ritual that you already incorporate as part of your day or that you hope to incorporate? If there, we do have a couple people online, so I'd love if folks come up here so it goes in the microphone for them as well. Come on up, please. Thank you. Um, I've really been struggling with my health for the last six to eight weeks. Um, and I've had a hard time getting out of bed because of it. And so something that I'm going to start doing is getting up at 630 and spending an hour just for myself. Um, and I think that that'll be a really good step for me. Thank you so much for sharing. Anyone else have something that they do or an idea that you'd like to share? Okay, Terry's coming up. Um, let me see. I think I can. I I think I can turn this towards you, Terry. No. All right. All right. Here we go. Thank you. Okay. Well, to me, a sacred day is a pajama day. <laughs> Reading, visiting, not going anywhere time for quiet or for music and tend to do more thinking with the quiet and my values is share what I have and pay it forward. Thank you, Terry. Share what I have and pay it forward. I love that. Anyone else want to share something before we move on? Okay, well, I hope this got you thinking. Malin did a sermon kind of like this a few years ago. I can't remember the exact topic, but I walked out of here with a note card that said on it, worry less, have fun every day. Those had, I, I had come up with those as my rules for living a good day. And I put it on my refrigerator and it really helped me. I thought about that every day for a long time after that. Um. Okay. So now it's time for the offering. The special collection, as we mentioned, for this month is the Welcome Essentials Pantry. Um, so all cash and any checks made out to UUCD with We Pantry in the memo will go to support the special collection. Um, all checks made out to UUCD with no memo will be considered contributions to the general fund. Um, please read the offertory words in unison. And then we're going to listen to 525,600 minutes from rent because, I mean, what better way to think about how we spend our time? So our offertory words together. This church is our community of faith, hope, and service. Its energy and resources are our energy and resources. Its gifts are what we share. By contributing to the life of this community, we affirm it and enable its participation in the larger world around us. <laughs> 